So you're thinking of buying or selling real estate in Medford, Oregon or the surrounding areas. Well, no matter if you're relocating or currently living in Medford, Oregon, this is the video you've been looking for. I'm gonna give you a guided tour of Southern Oregon and show you the different areas around what we call the Rogue Valley so you can learn everything you need to know about Southern Oregon and really figure out which part of the Rogue Valley is the best fit for you. I have plenty of videos about different towns and suburbs and areas of Southern Oregon like Grants Pass and Rogue River and more, and I'm putting out new videos every single week. So hit that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on some great new information about Southern Oregon. Also, please reach out if you have questions about a video or even about an area that I haven't created a video about yet. Leave a comment or call or text me using the number on the screen or use the link in the description of this video to set up a time for us to chat. I've lived in Southern Oregon since I was five years old, so I know it pretty well and I would love to share my knowledge and experience with you. Now, let's go ahead and dive into the map and I'll show you around. So let's start with the obvious of just where is Southern Oregon. And so it's pretty clear that Southern Oregon is the Southern part of Oregon, but we're not referring to the entire Southern part of Oregon when we say it. What we're actually talking about is really this pocket right here, which is bordered by the Cascade Mountains to the east, the Siskiyou Mountains to the south, and the coastal range over here to the west. And so you have this kind of pocket, which is, you know, Cave Junction, Grants Pass, Medford, Ashland, and really all the way up towards the Glendale area uh, along I-5 and all the way up towards Prospect area uh, on Highway 62. And what you can see if we go on to a different layer here and look at the satellite, you can see this is a very green area full of a lot of trees, mountains, valleys. There's nice lakes, uh, rivers. There's Crater Lake National Park up here, which is really awesome. Um, and it's really just a, a beautiful, beautiful area. And we'll get into that a little bit more here in a second. Um, but I want to show you another layer, which is the terrain layer, um, where you can really get a good view of what all the mountains are like around here um, and so that lends really really well for all the different outdoor activities like uh, hunting and camping and hiking and all that kind of stuff there's tons of uh, mountainous areas and and all sorts of really fun opportunities to get out there and enjoy uh, the scenery so if we turn this terrain layer off and just really take a look at what Medford uh, is all about you can see that there's quite a few suburbs right so there's Central Point and Jacksonville Phoenix talent White City, Eagle Point, Ashland, uh, and then all the way over to, to Grants Pass, Rogue River, Gold Hill, all these different, you know, little towns um, around the Medford area, which are really, really cool. And we'll talk about some of those here shortly. But Medford is the largest city in Southern Oregon, okay? It's home to Harry and David and uh, Lithia Auto. It's their corporate headquarters is here. It's where it was founded. Um, and we have a nice international airport here, which uh, is called an international airport, but doesn't actually have any international flights, which is kind of funny, but you can get to a lot of different uh, areas from Rogue Valley International Airport. There's direct flights to Portland and Seattle and Salt Lake and Los Angeles and uh, San Francisco, Phoenix, and, and a few others maybe that I'm forgetting. But um, anyways, for the most part, you, you can really get anywhere you want to go with just one stop, which is pretty convenient. And the airport is located just right near the, the middle of town, which is a very um, convenient location. So if we're talking again about Medford specifically, um, one of the other things I want to show you is the, the satellite view here where you can just see there's a lot of different you know areas around Medford where you have a lot of farmland and so this farmland uh, and even the hills and stuff around gives you a good opportunity to to get uh, a place uh, a nice home that's on a little bit of land an acre or maybe five acres or so where you can you know have a garden and a nice big lawn to play in and all that fun stuff so really uh, a nice area for that you don't have to be too far away to get that I mean if you're out here kind of on the southern side of Medford you could be into downtown in no time uh, and still have a couple acres um, of land where your neighbor's not right on top of you, okay? So we get over to, we're going to turn this that layer off and we're going to talk about just kind of East Medford and West Medford. Those are kind of the two big um, different sides of town, okay? And so that's separated by Interstate 5. You can see I-5 running here uh, and it actually runs throughout the entire valley. And so it comes up from California and goes all the way on up uh, into to Portland and Washington and all that. But that is what separates East and West Medford, okay? And so East Medford is known for um, the hills up here. You have this really cool area where it's, you know, kind of the more expensive part of town um, up here off of Hillcrest and um, McAndrews. Really a, a nice place in these these subdivisions. And you get some pretty nice expensive homes up even into the million dollar range. Um, but there's some that are much more affordable um, in the 
fives. And so, uh, but anyways, really a, a beautiful area there. The country club is what you're seeing right here with this golf course. Lots of nice homes on the country club as well. And uh, a lot of good, you know, opportunities there if you wanted to have a golf course front home. West Medford, on the other hand, is a little more affordable. A lot of good opportunities here for first-time home buyers uh, or people that are just not looking to spend, you know, that much money. Um, there's a lot of new developments going on here, especially off of, you know, Columbus Avenue uh, and uh, Lozier Lane, which is right here. A lot of these these fields here that you've seen, these are kind of getting filled in with new developments. And so um, great location for, for if you're not wanting to spend, you know, the 500000 you could have a great home in this area, uh, West Medford for in the 300s, and still be able to enjoy all the amenities of town. You're very, very close to downtown Medford, uh, which has lots of great restaurants and you know, nightlife and all that kind of fun stuff. So before we jump into the other towns, I want to point out a couple quick things, which are the main high schools. Okay. So South Medford High School is right here. And you can see this blue turf there. It's the South Medford Panthers. Um, and that's their newer high school. It was built not too long ago, uh, probably in the last five or 10 years and really a, a beautiful school. And that is on uh, the west side of I-5 and serves this big, big area. So you can look that all up and find the exact, you know, districts and everything of what that serves. But that is one of the big high schools in the area. And the other is here in North Medford. Um, and that is North Medford High School right here that you can see. So those are both big uh, 6A schools, which is uh, the biggest school uh, classification in Oregon. And there's a lot of other smaller schools around the area too, including, you know, Cascade Christian High School. Uh, Central Point has its own school, which is great high school which is up here uh, and most of these towns have their their own schools associated but i want to just point out those are the two big ones um, in in medford is south and north medford so now let's zoom out and go take a look at ashland and we'll kind of work our way up the valley um, the rogue valley from here so ashland is really really a cool place it's known as um, it's known for having uh, southern oregon university and so if we zoom in here you can see uh, the college uh, their football field all that sort of stuff Really um, a nice school known as the, a liberal arts school, uh, but uh, but that kind of comes with a lot of the same, you know, culture and, and fun stuff that uh, that a lot of college towns do. And you end up with, with good restaurants and good um, nightlife and, and just a lot of fun stuff to do in Ashland. And so um, one of the things is the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. That's very, very popular. And if we zoom in on that, you can see you can see some of the great photos of um, the Shakespeare Festival and the, the theater that they have. That's really a, an amazing thing. And a lot of people come from a long ways to watch plays here. Uh, it's really a, a great replica of the Globe Theater, I believe it is. Um, not a, a play buff, but um, I've heard that this is one of the best ones in the world. So right next to the Oregon Shakespeare Festival is the Lithia Park, okay? And this is a really popular park. It's a big park too. You can see it goes all the way up in here. Um, and really a, just a great little park right in the center of town. Um, next to the the plaza this is the the plaza and this is just lined with incredible restaurants um, all these in here and going up the the main street here lots of really really great restaurants and this makes for a great place to have a date night or whatever uh, go watch a play go to a great restaurant and uh, or even stay for the weekend and go to the Ashland Springs Hotel which is really really incredible a uh, great wedding venue too I've been to a number of weddings there last thing I want to mention about Ashland um, is just the proximity to the ski resort uh, so we zoom back out so zoom back out and then we we can zoom back in right here to Mount Ashland Ski Resort and it's shown here with obviously no snow on it but um, you can be up here skiing in no time from the city of Ashland I mean probably half hour drive or so uh, to get into Ashland um, from from the ski resort and it's not a huge mountain but it's enough to go up and have a great time um, and ski and there's a nice uh, bunny hill for people that are learning how to ski and all sorts of stuff there uh, so I would would say this is definitely the most uh, culturally enriched part of Southern Oregon, which is generally pretty typical for a college town. Um, it tends to be higher priced in terms of the real estate, a um, little well, quite a bit higher than the rest of the uh, parts of Southern Oregon. But uh, with that, you get a lot of really, really cool stuff, you know, proximity to the skiing, proximity to Immigrate Lake. Um, you can be up into the mountains, into the Cascades in no time, just going up Highway 66 here. And there's a bunch of lakes uh, up there to go enjoy. So uh, 
a lot of really good stuff about Ashland. And it's very, very popular for those reasons. And just north of Ashland is Phoenix and Talent. Okay. And so these are also two little towns that are um, just kind of the suburbs of, you know, in between Medford and uh, Ashland. So they're really known for just being kind of more affordable, but really, really close to Ashland. Um, and so you get to just be able to enjoy those amenities without having to pay the higher prices associated with Ashland. Talent is also known for a big fire that came through in 2021 and it destroyed 2,600 homes. Okay. So that started here in this, you can see this, this is called the Greenway. Uh, and it started on this Greenway and just kind of burned up through here and uh, really destroyed a lot of talent um, and even into Phoenix. Okay. So uh, what's, what's part of that is, you know, now there's a lot of rebuilding going on, uh, a lot of newer homes in here. Uh, and it's, it's pretty popular for those reasons because you can get a nice new home um, surrounded by nice new homes in an area that's really convenient uh, for accessing uh, Ashland or Medford and uh, and tends to be you know pretty reasonably priced. So we're going to go continue on north here skip back across Medford because we just talked about that and let's look at Central Point okay Central Point is really a cool town and I actually lived in Central Point for a little bit um, and what Central Point is known for is being very very central uh, it's a really you know believe it or not right funny name uh, but it's a, a great location because it's right off Interstate 5 here and Highway 99 runs right through it so it's very easy to get into town here and to get to Medford it's very easy to access I-5 if you need to go to maybe one of you, maybe you know maybe one of you works in Grants Pass and the other works in Medford Central Point's a great option for people like that because it's just a you know 25 minute drive or so to Grants Pass and just a couple minutes into into Medford so very popular for those reasons also really easy to get out to um, Highway 62 if you needed to get up and and maybe you work out here you know in Eagle Point or White City area so great location for that close proximity to the airport uh, lots of parks and I'll show you some of that real quick here this this is one of the favorite parks in the area. This is the Twin Creeks neighborhood. Uh, lots of really nice new homes in this neighborhood. Lots of good, you know, development stuff going on here. But this park is awesome. There's concerts and stuff that go on here. Um, soccer practice, flag football practice, all that kind of stuff going on in this big field. Um, basketball courts, volleyball courts. A lot of really good stuff going on uh, there in that park. And there's several others around that you'll see kind of scattered throughout here, um, including the Don Jones Memorial park which is another great one that has a big splash pad for the kids up here uh tennis courts and and pickleball courts and uh big big lawn so a lot of great stuff going on in central point and again really the big draw for a lot of people there is the proximity to pretty much anywhere in the rug valley and the pricing on homes in Central Point tends to be um, less than, you know, let's say East Medford, but um, very, very nice. And and one of my also favorite parts about Central Point is having these these West Hills here. OK, so if you're looking for a really beautiful home with a view um, of the valley, you could get to, you know, this this is Old Stage Road. You can find a really, really pretty home off of Old Stage Road that has um, or this is it right here uh, that has incredible views of the rest of the the Rug Valley. So just away from Central Point is the town of Jacksonville. Okay, and Jacksonville is absolutely incredible. It is a very historic town. It dates back to the 1850s um, and is absolutely just beautiful. Uh, and I'll see if we can maybe zoom in here and do a uh, street view. And I'll show you what the town looks like because it's it is really really pretty. So here's a nice view of the main street in Jacksonville. This is called California Street. And if we just kind of cruise up California Street, you can see it all has this old style you know the the 1800 style brick buildings and all sorts of stuff here lots of great restaurants uh, just really pretty and and a, a neat town and and in christmas time and stuff they do a really great job of just decorating this town uh, making it feel very festive and just looking really really neat um, Jacksonville is also known for the Brit Festival, which is a concert series that's held right up here at the Brit Gardens. And we'll let that load real quick. But you can see, you know, this this big concert hall is really, really special. It's a big outdoor area here and you get great uh, musicians that come in and perform and you can just have a blanket out on the grass or if you are, um, you know, a ticket holder, you can have uh, seats here. But this is uh, one of the, the most popular things to do um, during the, you know, summer uh, season when they're doing it. And um, just take a look at that, you know, Google it and check it out online because there's a lot of great stuff going on there. 
Similar to Ashland, though, Jacksonville tends to be a little bit higher priced uh, because it's it's just very popular. Uh, so it's popular, again, because of its proximity to Medford um, and, and all the amenities. It has a lot of the higher end homes up in these hills and stuff where you get some beautiful, beautiful homes with beautiful views um, and some space. So we've zoomed out from Z- Jacksonville and we're going to go take a look at the other side of town. All right. So Jacksonville is to the west of Medford. And we're now going to hop over to the east side and go Go work our way up Highway 62 and go take a look at White City. Um, you might notice right here, these are the table rocks. And so these actually are really, really cool, um, cool rocks here. And you can hike. Uh, there's a little parking spot here, parking area. And you can go ahead and hike Upper Table Rock. Um, and I'll show you some of the pictures real quick of that. And here's some of the views from Upper Table Rock, um, views of the valley from there. Really a pretty spot. And the same thing with Lower Table Rock. You can park right over in here and hike on up here. These are very easy hikes, maybe a mile, mile and a half. Um, and uh, and you can get up there and just have, you know, a nice view of the, the town, have a picnic or whatever, but really, really popular hiking spots. Um, again, because of their proximity to everything uh, and they're really incredible views um, right along the river as well. So you get those river views when you're, when you're hiking up there, which is pretty cool. But back to White City. So White City is uh, nice and popular because it's really affordable. Uh, super popular town for first time home buyers and investors. It's also one of the most affordable parts of Southern Oregon. It's a USDA loan eligible area, uh, which makes it possible to get a 0% down loan. Uh, You'd have to qualify for that and everything. There's some requirements that you need to talk to a lender about, but really neat area though, White City. Uh, You have Highway 140 that comes right through White City, and this is what would drive you drive on this one to get over towards uh, Klamath Falls area um, over here on the east side. But White City is pretty awesome. White City's nice up and coming town, a lot of growth going on there, uh, a lot of building going on, you know, out in this area because it's nice flat level ground um, and, and easy to build on. So uh, if you're looking for something really affordable and you don't want to be in, you know, the West Medford area, White City is a great spot to check out again, because those USDA loans um, are, are really, really sweet. It's also home to the uh, the VA domiciliary, the Veterans Affairs uh, domiciliary. And so that's another big thing that employs a lot of people uh, and a big draw to White City. Just beyond White City is the town of Eagle Point. And Eagle Point, again, great little town, um, has an Eagle Point High School here, um, has a lot of the, the farming kind of stuff along the outskirts of town. And it's also really popular because of this golf course. So the Eagle Point Golf Club, um, really Really a great golf course, probably my favorite in the valley, um, and maybe my second favorite. But it's it's really a pretty course. I've played it a number of times, and you can see there's some great homes right along the course. And so, uh, if you're looking for a golf course front home uh, or like a golf community, this is the place that I would be saying to check out. Um, this one and the Rogue Valley Country Club. But great course here, uh, and really a, a cool town. Um, Eagle Point's also um, it's pretty convenient for if you wanted to be able to jump up to Shady Cove area, uh, but it's a little further away from Medford, probably 15 minute drive or so to get from Eagle Point into downtown Medford. So let's go ahead and speak in Shady Cove and take a look at Shady Cove. Um, this is the furthest up we're going to go. It's kind of the last, um, you know, town of any size uh, going north on Highway 62. Uh, but Shady Cove is really a, a beautiful little river town. You can see the river, the Rogue River runs right through the town. Um, and, and it's very, very popular for rafting the upper rogue uh, and this track this section up here is what we call the upper rogue so you could go put in your raft um, right up here uh, just below lost creek lake which is again an amazing lake for for uh, recreating boating fishing all that fun stuff on here um, but you can put in a raft right right below that and raft all the way down to shady cove and take out right here at the bridge and that's a really really popular float and there's a bunch of different rafting companies and stuff here here that will, uh, you know, you can drive, drop your car off, they'll take you up there, you raft down, and they make it very, very easy for you. So super popular for that. My kids would argue with me though, and they would say that the most popular part about Shady Cove is Phil's Frosty, which is a really cool little uh, hole in the wall restaurant right here that makes, it's been here forever, as long as I can remember when I was a little kid, and they have really great, you know, soft serve ice cream and all that fun stuff. So if you're ever in Shady Cove, make sure you check that place out. The next small town I want to talk about is 
Rogue River. And so if we were to follow the river all the way down here, we would get to the town of Rogue River. So Rogue River is my hometown, and it's actually a pretty popular town with my clients who are moving here from out of the area. And it's something that that tends to be true because, um, well, I love it. And so I talk to them a lot about, you know, if you're looking for a place that has that small town feel, which a lot of people that are moving from out of the area are, you know, they're wanting that small town feel and that sense of community. Towns like Rogue River and Shady Cove and Gold Hill, they really, really have that. Okay. So um, in, in this town, as an example of, you know, that small town feel and that sense of community, Rogue River does some really, really neat stuff. And so um, every, you know, Memorial Day and Veterans Day and um, Independence Day, the streets of Rogue River are lined with hundreds of American flags. Uh, and they, they'll they go over the bridge here. And then this is Main Street, all up and down Main Street um, and Pine Street. And I mean, it's really, they do a, a great job of, of just showing, you know, that patriotic, uh, um, you know, sense of community and, and all that sort of stuff. It's really a special thing to see. Uh, definitely one of my favorite things about Rogue River. Um, it does have a uh, elementary school, middle school, and high school, uh, which is just up here right outside of town. Um, and, and you can see, you know, if you wanted to have a home that had some additional acreage, five acres, 10 acres, whatever, there's all sorts of opportunities as you go north um, up into the Weimar area and, um, and even south uh, down into, you know, Foots Creek and, and those sorts of areas um, around the Rogue River and Gold Hill area. And so Gold Hill is very similar to Rogue River. It's just to the east here, uh, another small little historic town that is uh, pretty popular. Um, it's a little bit lower priced than Rogue River, uh, but very similar in a lot of ways. I'd say it probably doesn't have the amenities that Rogue River has. Um, it does have, you know, a grocery store and, and those sorts of things. But if you go back over to Rogue River, we can zoom in on this and you'll see, you know, there's a good hotel right here, probably the best Mexican restaurant in Southern Oregon, in my opinion. Um, this Italian restaurant in, so in Rogue River was just uh, ranked the number one Italian restaurant in all of Southern Oregon. Um, you also have a couple of gas stations. You have uh, a supermarket. You have a hardware store. Um, there's doctor's offices, dentist offices, uh, pretty much everything you really need. And and if we, not that a, it's clear I'm obviously a fan of Rogue River, but I'll say that the, the one of the best things about it is is just the proximity to Grants Pass is about 10 minutes and the proximity to Central Point Medford is about 20 and this is very similar with Gold Hill I mean they're probably five or seven minutes apart so um, these are again really really popular areas for people who are uh, maybe maybe somebody works in the Medford area and somebody works in the Grants Pass area um, being right in the middle is is a great thing that a lot of my clients um, really really like and again for both of these little towns, tons of recreational opportunities, uh, tons of, you know, if you want to get up in the mountains and hike or camp or whatever you want to do or fish on the river or raft or boat or kayak or jet ski, there's just so many opportunities for that um, in between these towns and really the rest of Southern Oregon. And if we continue on a little bit further to the east um, or what's called north on I-5, even though I-5 actually runs east-west through here, that's technically north, um, you get to Grants Pass. Okay, and Grants Pass is a great little town that I'm going to include a link to a video I just did on Grants Pass. So that link will be right up here right now. Grants Pass is awesome. Um, it is home to Dutch Bros Coffee, uh, where the corporate headquarters is and, and where it was founded and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and really a great river town. Okay, um, Boatnik Festival is uh, what we just had on Memorial Day weekend. And it is a great festival that, you know, there's drag boats that do a, a race along the stretch of the river right here um there are you know other boats that do more of a marathon style race where they go way down you know all the way out towards like griffin park area and race back up so really a, a lot of fun stuff going on in grants pass um for that type of stuff and and again many many opportunities for um you know those types of properties where you want a little bit of space uh and also a lot of new construction and development going on in grants pass as well it's growing quite a bit but i won't go into much detail on grants pass because i just did a big video 
video on that and and you can check that one out and get all the details on grants pass that you want so now let's talk about just the overall area and a couple of the fun things to do in the area and so i'm going to go back to this view on the map just to make it simple um and what i want to explain is just the fun stuff to do that are within real close proximity to the southern oregon area here okay and what's really really popular is crater lake national park and so to show you some pictures of what crater lake park is it's it's absolutely stunning it's one of the deepest lakes on earth and it is really a beautiful beautiful site um i definitely recommend checking that out uh if you've never been up there if you're visiting southern oregon and you want to have a fun getaway it's maybe a little over an hour hour and a, I'd call it an hour and a half uh drive from medford uh but absolutely beautiful and worth it to go check out Another cool place is Lost Creek Lake. And so if we zoom in on Lost Creek Lake, uh, it's a good sized lake. You can camp at Stewart County Park. Um, you can go boating. You can uh, fish. A lot of fishing goes on here. Uh, all sorts of fun stuff. And, or just swimming. There's a lot of different swimming holes and stuff you can go um, go to and, and find a little cove and just go swim and have a good time. A couple other things I'll, I'll mention as we're talking about fun stuff to do is rafting the rogue river so we talked about the the float from you know uh around shady cove there there's also a couple of other really popular ones from you know gold hill to rogue river uh or from different parts of grants pass uh you know along the stretch of river merlin to galise um there's some really really great stuff here and if you're not you know familiar with how to you know operate a raft or a kayak or anything there's great um companies in merlin and grants pass and shady cove who in in even Gold Hill that will help you um, and, and guide you on trips on the Rogue River. So really, you know, a lot of good opportunities there for having a, a lot of fun. We're also close enough to some of the other areas to have um, a good getaway for a weekend. So if you live in the Southern Oregon, you know, Grants Pass, Medford area, really easy to hop over to the coast and go to Crescent City or Brookings and go see the Redwoods. Uh, the Redwoods are down here by Crescent City. Um, you can go check that out, which is really, really incredible. Or go up into Brookings and go fishing and crabbing and all that kind of stuff. And that's only, you know, a couple hours away uh, in, in the car. Or go the other way if you want to get away from the coastal climate. If you want to get up to Bend, uh, Bend is absolutely amazing. And that's only about a three hour drive drive from Southern Oregon. So you can get up there and have a great time or Eugene, if you want to go watch a, a football game, uh, the ducks play up there and, and really, really, you know, what two hour drive, two and a half hour drive from Medford to get up to Eugene. So lots of opportunities for those types of things. Uh, in addition to camping, I mean, there's so many camping places in the Cascades here in the Siskiyous to the South, so much stuff to do outdoors, golfing, there's vineyards all over the place. If we go back to the, the terrain view here, you can, or the satellite view, you can see the Applegate Valley has, you know, vineyards all over and through here. Um, they're also just kind of littered all throughout the valley. So lots of good vineyards, lots of good fun places to, uh, to spend time however you however you like to spend it so i hope that was helpful a uh, nice little tour of the medford and southern oregon area uh, and if you have questions about any of these areas or if there's something you want to know more about um, just give me a call uh, my number's on the screen right now 541-954-7758 give me a shout i'm more than happy to help you uh, any way i can or provide additional information for you on any parts of the southern oregon area here so so i hope that was helpful if you have questions about the medford oregon weather or the Southern Oregon real estate market, please reach out so I can help you. I'm Brian Simmons with eXp Realty. And if you'd like to see more videos about the best towns in Southern Oregon or learn about the Medford, Oregon real estate market, click that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you can catch the next video. Also drop me a comment and let me know your favorite part of Southern Oregon. I can't wait to hear from you. See you in the next video.